So today we're going to try to get this old 1948 Diamond T up and running. It's been parked for 66 years, so 1955 is the last time this old truck was on the road. It is a Diamond T pickup truck, which which is really neat. And the engine in it's a flathead six, so hopefully we can get that thing free and get it running. So since, well, the spark plugs broke off in there since they've been in there since 55s. Well, actually probably before 55 because... I was told it was parked in 55, so they've probably been sitting in there since the 40s. They're massive Ferguson plugs. I've never seen a set of them. We're going to pull the head off this engine already since we already know it's cracked, and it's going to have to come off anyway. And also, we can make sure we get all the stuff out of the cylinder walls and clean it up real good. So if it does turn over, which I think it will once we get the head off and get some penetrating fluid down in there, we won't mess up the rings, and we can get them rings free. So when we switch the head from this one to the from the head that's on the big truck back there, we'll know it's gonna run good and run right. So we're gonna use the old impact and hopefully these head bolts won't break off in there. Well, so far so good. There's some short head bolts. And as you can see the exhaust down here is kind of just rusted off or someone took it off, either or. Maybe we can get to them. Maybe not. There's that one. And probably get stuck. Well, have to get the screwdriver on that one. And we brought the line. Dig everything out from around it and beat the socket on there. There's not much room underneath this centerfold hood. It ain't very hard to take off, I don't think, so I'd end up doing that here in a minute. Oh, boy. Wouldn't take no time if they didn't get stuck. And just remember, we gotta do this twice. So that was just a few seconds for you guys, but it took me about another hour, hour and a half to get the, all these bolts up because ones back there were really, really tight and didn't want to come out, but they're all here. We had to use the old Knuckle Buster 9400 to get them out, but we got them out, and I guess we're going to pull this head. I already cut the radiator hose, and we're going to see what look. All right, there we go. Let's see here. It don't look pretty in there, but it isn't as bad as it could be. We did forget that somehow. It's not a head gasket look like. Boy, it don't look too bad, but US Patton. Might be able to look this up and find me another one. Let's see what down the block looks like. Well, honestly, it ain't bad. That is, for as long as this has been said, this is perfect. There's nothing. Well, there's no ring ridge on this engine at all. Oh, there's a little bit right there, but this is more than fixable. I mean, we'll have this in running. Let's throw that out of the way. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this, and as long as the block's not busted anywhere, which I don't think, don't believe it is, we'll get the shop vac over here. The valves are a little dirty, but none of them are. That and seized. That and is. That and is too, but none of them are too terrible. So we're going to clean this up, probably spray some WD 40 down in the cylinders, then shop vac it out. That's what I'll do right now, actually. Just get it around these rings and. There we go. After for, setting for 66 years, this motor's in better shape than the Starliner that only set for 54 years. But they said in different areas, this one was set. So I shot back out all the cylinders off camera because that shot back is louder than the Cummins diesel running. But they don't look terrible. I sprayed some more WD-40 in there. It's starting to take off that corrosion that's on top of the pistons and also there's a little bit of corrosion around the valves and on top of them. So I sprayed them, sprayed all the valves that were open and all the valves that are closed around them to hopefully 
help lubricate that so we can get this engine turning over. About to fill the cylinders with all the misreal. A generous amount, probably. You don't need to be a whole lot. Don't want to waste all of it. We're going to need it for the transmission, I'm sure. Now that one back there may be a problem to get to. So far, we've hardly went through any of it for them in here. Let's see. If I can lean back in here good enough. And... There we go. That should be good enough for the. I'm sure someone out there is screaming because I'm getting it all over the place, but it don't much matter since this engine's been setting for 66 years and it needs a little bit of lubrication wherever it can get it. So hopefully with this, well, that surface rust is already starting to come off from that WD-40, which is surprising. We'll spray this back one again with some WD-40. There we go. Hopefully here in a minute after this. Boy, that makes a pretty color when it mixes with WD-40. Makes like a purple. A dark purple, I don't know if that shows up on camera, but pretty neat. I'm going to let this sit for a while and hopefully some of it will seep down around them rings. And hopefully if I leave, I'm not sure if I leave this all night tonight before I try to crank it, I may do that. And if it sinks down around them rings, all of this will be in business because that'll mean the ring should be free. About 30 minutes I've been messing with the transmission on the inside here. I got a pop wrench on the drive shaft. I had to cut the old parking brake, emergency brake, whatever you want to call it to get it loose because none of them bolts would come undone. They were stripping off, breaking off. But like I said, it's been about 30 minutes and most of this Marvel mystery oil that was in the cylinders has, has soaked through. So I got some more of it. I'm gonna pour these cylinders full again to keep lubricating down them cylinder walls. And we're gonna try to turn it over here in a minute. If I can get that transmission where it's turning over in a good bite with a, on it with a pipe wrench. We go fill this one up again too i'll have to change the oil after all this but it's better to do this and lubricate them cylinder walls and get them rings soaking up the juice so we don't break them and so they'll expand again and we'll have compression because at this point i bet we don't have compression i'm gonna try to wiggle it some and get it to move just a little bit and hopefully not break the rings. See here. No, it ain't moving now. A minute ago, I swear I got it to move just the littlest bit, I thought. May just been me thinking. Oh. Nope. Oh. oh, there we go. Oh, we got it free. Holy cow. Whew. Motor turns now, see that? Boom. This one's up at the top now, that one's up at the top. We got them loose. Whew. Pretty excited about that. That valve's starting to go down. This one not yet. But I'm gonna turn her over a few more times, cycle her out and see what we get. Probably gonna go grab a rag in these cylinders. Well, pistons that are up top, wipe them off. These pistons went down, both of these are coming up now. That one cleaned itself up on the inside, knocked the rust out. This one's still where it was at. Well, it might be a little higher, but we're doing pretty good so far. Quite surprised with it. Gotta kind of clean this one off a little and wipe the cylinder wall down on this one. A little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil won't hurt it. Make sure we're not just destroying our rings here. More WD-40 down in there. I'm th almost positive she'll run here in a little while. It's gonna try to, I'm mowing up the drive shaft pretty good, but just a drive shaft. 
There we go. See, it turns and it wants to catch. God almighty. That was rough. About died on that one. That frame is sharp. Too bad I didn't have the other camera going. It overheated because it's a GoPro and apparently they don't like the heat. God almighty. It don't want to go much past there. That ain't even where we were at a minute ago. Huh. It's been a pain in the butt. Whew. Something in there's bound up from, well said, it's rough on them, but. Whew. At least it cut my fingers off. Grabbing. I think you guys can somewhat see what's going on. I got three of the bolts out and two of them I had to cut off with a chisel, but we're gonna try to knock this out of here now. sound healthy okay none of that sounding healthy at all it seems that that cast iron wants to crack and we don't want that it's all rusted out this is real thin up here like really thin so we'll try to get a hold of it down here and So I forgot to turn the camera back on, but we got that right there off of there. Well, the transmission cover plate, it broke off there from the trans and it broke the top of the plate. That ain't good, but we can fix it. It's really rusty in there. That's why it wouldn't move back and forth. The gears do have a little bit of rust on them. I've spun it over a few times and now we know the engine will spin one complete revolution. All the valves open and close, everything does right. Even the rear piston back there came up. For a minute, I was getting scared that there might be a rod or something loose because it'd catch, but that is the transmission catching for some reason. But I'm gonna clean all these pistons off, clean everything up, shop vac it out again, fill it with Marvel Mystery Oil again, shop vac it, then probably fill it with Marvel Mystery Oil one more time. Then we'll put the head back on it and hopefully it'll start to build compression. I'm not sure if it's gonna have any, might put some tape over there and spin it over and see if it'll pop the tape because right now i'm not sure if it's going to have any compression but i'm pretty sure we can build compression by spinning it over enough and it'll start working them rings and they'll spring back to where they need to be so i'm gonna clean that up and i ain't gonna show you guys that part because the shop vac is really annoying so i'll get that done and get back with you guys and hopefully by the end of the day we'll have the head on this thing and tomorrow morning we'll fire it up so i cleaned the cylinders out one last time everything's looking good the valves are relatively clean. There's no real rust on them. There's just a little bit of just buildup actually of lead and stuff from leaded gasoline. I believe that right there's lead. I may be wrong, but it seems to be lead or something along them lines. I got the head gasket saver right here and we're gonna spray this head gasket down right here and then throw her back on and, well, we didn't shake it up enough maybe. Then we're gonna throw it back on Put the head on there and we should be ready to go after I figure out how to make the starter work. Hopefully you guys can see over there we got this head that weighs what feels like a ton when you extend it out over here and try to get this bolt. Because this will not come out with the cab on so you got to put it on. I mean it won't go in with the cab on and it won't come out with the cab on without the head coming off with it. So got to be careful with this and try not to tap them valves because sometimes they'll just break right off. Let's see here. I'm going to try to shove it all the way back in there. One clean sweep. Okay, we're going to set her down. We had her for a second. I did put a little bit of grease down. So it should spread that head gasket like it needs to be, hopefully. We are a little bit off. Okay. There we go. We should be in place like we need to be. I can see the head gasket here. Hopefully y'all can see it on the other side. Just throw a little WD-40 on this bolt, drop her in there and, well, that's not a good sign. They don't just flop down in there. You're not lined up right. 
try this one. It didn't just flop down in there, so something's up. Let's see here. This head's been a headache. Pinched the crap out of me. That ain't gonna hurt. Okay, we are now through the head there. Make sure we're over here. Yep. If we're good in both of these places, we should be good in the rear. That's the theory, at least. Now, if I did something wrong, you ought to tell me here, because it's a possibility. I think everything in there is like The starter I bought yesterday did not work with a big one that was a 12 volt, so I took this one and got it kind of fixed, I believe. It works now, it wasn't working. I've had it off two more times today, but with it in gear, I turned it over, and I guess found a new place on the flywheel. It now works, and it'll spin it over when it's in gear. I haven't taken it out of gear, because since it's spinning it over, I'm not going to mess with that. The next thing to do is pop this cap off of here and check the points. I've already checked them earlier before. They're not terrible. Or it might have been the other truck I checked. I don't remember. But they're not terrible. Let's see here. If I can even get the... There we go. The cap's a little corroded underneath there. There's no shiny spots on it like they're supposed to be. Let's take the bug off of it. It's not too bad. It looks pretty clean. Rallies and get one of these coils because I think the reason it would run, well, kind of hit and wouldn't run, is because this cool. Well, there, there's the cool. It's not hot enough for this because it's old wore out cool. If you guys remember, it came off that Datsun over there that we were working on and got running. So I got this and it's 45,000 volts. So hopefully you can taste this one when it shocks you because this one ain't too bad. You can't taste it. So let's see what she looks like here. There we go, it's even got bubble wrap and one of them things so you don't steal it. Is there constructions? Comes with a sticker. This vehicle is equipped with one of the following. I guess you put this on your, you know, car or something. It's shiny. Is it a sticker? Yeah, it's a sticker. We'll put this on here if you know this thing doesn't look like it even needs anything this shiny. There we go. Maybe we got the size around here somewhere. Yep, there we go. The negative side, I believe the negative side. Let me think here. We're, po we're running positive ground. Where's our little resistor? I was told we need that little ballast thing where we'll burn our points up, so I bought one. I already opened it up and got it out of the plastic. It came with all these things. So I'm thinking I can just stick that on the cool. I'm mistaken. Which side's the, the power's hooked up to the positive side, okay? So that's the one we're going to put this on. At least that's what they said. So let's take them off of there. Is this going to fit? No, it is not going to fit. That sucks. We're just going to forget about that and act like we put this on there and probably mess something up. Just put this back in the box for now. Just stick that in there. We'll be good. We don't need that anyway. Let's go down here and we better pick all these up or I'll lose them in about 0.3 seconds. Just drop them there. Set this bad boy here. It's all nice and shiny. We also got another dad gummit, different bolt sides. We also got another cool too. Not cool. Set of spark plug wires because if you notice these are kind of just stuck together and I did get a tap that's the same size as them front spark plug holes so hopefully we can do something there and i'm hoping this hopefully this cool right here is hot enough. enough is the zappy boy plugged in no it ain't
Good lord. Yeah, we're getting lightning now. Holy crap. Yeah, uh, there ain't no way it ain't. There is no absolute way it's not getting sparked now. So if it don't start now, it ain't gonna start. If it don't at least try to hit, there's no hope for it. Golly. Hopefully I got that on camera. I lost my eyelashes, I believe. Rethreaded cylinder number one, so we're only down two cylinders for the most part. I put new spark plug wires on it and everything else, and hopefully now that all that's done, we actually get some spark. The cool's plugged up and everything, so as long as the starter works. Well, it may not want to work today. Huh. It ain't in gear, is it? Nope. It's just not one to turn it over. We'll pop it in gear here for a second. There we go. Ought to be able to. Nope. Find something heavier. Now we should be able to see if we're getting any spark at all. Look at that there and hope for the best. Still no spark whatsoever. Days since I've messed with this one now. I put another set of points in it. If I can find that, here we go. I put another set of points in it because these were new, but for some reason these were bad out of the package. That was our whole problem. These points were not getting I guess a good enough connection. I found that out by putting new wires on everything, running that wire to the battery, changing everything on it before I found out that the new points were no good. So I put a new set of them in there, well, another new set, and these actually work. I did re, well, I tapped this spark plug hole, fixed it, it's ready to go. This one, I think the last time I left off, this one was done. This one took a little while to thread it back in, but we've got it threaded this, Number one cylinder does not have compression due to the exhaust valve is now hung. But number two through six do have compression. So five out of six do. That's pretty good. It should run off of that. The only other thing is, let me adjust this here real quick because I think, there we go. <clears throat> the only other thing other than that is, it should be in time because I brought this into top dead center on the compression stroke by turning it over with the, just tapping the starter and I finally got it the other day. So everything should be ready to run. I haven't tried to hit it yet and get it running. So we're gonna do that now. I got all this stuff already set up. So I'm gonna go hook the battery up. And after we do that, we're gonna spin it over a few times. Hopefully the starter doesn't get stuck because I believe, yeah, last time I was trying this, about a day ago, two days ago, when I last messed with it, the starter got stuck and it took me forever to get it free. I didn't have to pull the starter, but I just had to wiggle it back and forth and tap on the starter and it finally gave up. Now we're gonna see if she'll spin over. I also grounded the condenser out, just ran a jumper cable to it, just to make sure nothing is left to chance here. When I was spinning it over the other day, it was kind of hidden, but there was so much white smoke coming out of the oil fill neck whatever you want to call it that it was just outrageous so we're going to pour some gas in here healthy amount hopefully and hopefully not set the world on fire here because there's a whole bunch of oil underneath it but that sucks though if only one of them's hidden we'll go this way real good and maybe we'll get something God almighty. Cole's getting fire now. 
that tasted about felt like 45,000 volts right there. Okay, let's not get near them spark plug wires now. Well, I wasn't getting fire the last time I left you guys, and I was wrong. It's getting very, very good fire. I even put a bigger cool wire on it. This is the biggest one you can get. It's a eight millimeter, or at least that's what the parts store people told me. I think you can get bigger spark plug wires than that, but not at a parts store. And I just grabbed that one because I could, and I ran it from there. But even with the little 7.5 in there, I mean, it will about lay you on the ground and curl you up. It is rough. That cool right there has got plenty of juice. I still feel it through here from a second ago when I zapped myself with it. And also, if you touch that right there, when it's cranking over, it will shock the crap out of you too. So I'm not sure if it's gonna hit off now. I haven't changed a whole lot. I did put the other distributor cap back on because I was having better luck with it. And I put that bigger heavy duty wire on it. We are timed correctly. I know that for a fact. I've checked that again. So we're just gonna give it another try and I hope she fires off. I don't like to admit defeat, but I don't think we have enough compression to fire. If you've noticed when it does hit, all that white smoke's coming out of there. So sad to say, but we've been beat by a 1948 model Diamond T pickup truck. It wins the battle now. Well, it wins the war. We won a few battles here. We got the spark plugs and stuff like that in there, but thank you guys for watching and sorry we didn't get this and running if you like this content please like su subscribe or consider subscribing but the next one we're going to get running i mean normally we get these old things running but thank you guys for watching